Good evening, and thank you for attending this third State of the City Address. It's um, my pleasure to welcome all of you this evening. And before I start my introduction, I'm going to do a shout out to the just retired city manager who really looks like he's enjoying retirement. Where are you? If you haven't noticed, he even grew a beard. So anyway, thanks again for coming this evening and for attending this year's State of the City Address. Um, I'm Birgit Close, and I have the honor of leading the right place as its president and CEO. We are the West Michigan Economic Development Organization, and we work, of course, within the city of Grand Rapids, as well as through a 13-county region to create jobs and economic growth. We were created over 30 years ago as a private-public partnership, emphasis on both, because it takes both the private and the public sector to make economic growth happen. I like to say, and my staff hears me say this often, economic development is a team sport. And the city of Grand Rapids has been a critical member of that team for over three decades. And today, that partnership continues under the strong leadership of Mayor Bliss, the city commission, as well as other team members in the city. This evening, I have the distinct honor of introducing Mayor Bliss for her third annual State of the City Address. Under her leadership, Grand Rapids has focused on growth that makes us a better community. Mayor Bliss' commitment to our city and its economic success is reflected in her work that, in fact, all Grand Rapidians should share in the success the city is enjoying. She's a collaborative problem solver who works with residents, stakeholders, the business community, and the philanthropy community to make sure that Grand Rapids is the right place for everyone. Mayor Bliss understands the vital role that leadership will play in the future of our city. And we're working together as a community to create a vision, a joint vision, a common vision for our city's future. By building a vision for the future, a collective vision for the future, and by building the leadership that it will take to fulfill that vision, we will, we will, we can, and we must take Grand Rapids to the new next level. We will, we can, and we must take this city to the next level. Together, we are partnering to build a city that's inclusive, livable, accessible, and open for business. And I believe, and I know the mayor believes, that it takes really those, that four-legged stool to take the city to that next level. Our success as a community depends on community and business community. One is not doable without the other. Together, we can create a city that ensures that all people of the city, all Grand Rapidians, have an opportunity for growth and success. Over the past few decades, we've had and shared in a number of really, really successful partnerships to make the city what it is today. And we need to continue those partnerships between city, business community, and philanthropy to continue the trajectory we are on. It is often said that in Grand Rapids, we punch above our weight. And I can tell you this, so does our mayor. And it is... So it is with great pleasure that I introduce my partner, my friend, and our mayor, Rosalind Bliss. Thank you so much, and thank you, Birgit. It's really your incredible leadership that I want to thank. 30 years of leadership, which has helped shape our city and contributed to the strong economic growth that we see today. Your work here across the state and truly internationally has helped put Grand Rapids on the map. So thank you. Thank you.
Good evening. Good evening, friends and neighbors and fellow citizens of Grand Rapids. I am so thrilled to be with you tonight to present the State of the City Address for 2018. Tonight, we have a lot of ground to cover. As we look at the many good things that we are working on, identify where we can do better, and share a vision for the next chapter in the exciting story that Grand Rapids has been writing. But before we begin, I ask you to join me in a moment of silence for Mr. John Canapa and Mr. Don Main. No discussion about the success of our city would be complete without acknowledging the tremendous impact of Mr. Canapa as a business leader and a community builder who had a grand vision for Grand Rapids. He and Don helped change the landscape of our city and they made significant contributions. Please join me in a moment of silence and respect for these amazing leaders and the legacies they leave. Thank you. A big part of our city's history is success through collaboration. We are a city that works because we work together. And that spirit is clearly in the air tonight. This evening would not be possible without the generous support of our community partners and sponsors. I want to thank them for all they do to contribute to the strength and success of our city. So please join, in, join me in giving them a big round of applause and thank you. And speaking of community partners, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the elected officials who are here this evening. And I'm going to start with my colleagues on the City Commission. I am so grateful to serve with these amazing public servants. And tonight, everything I touch on, it's about us. It's their work. It's our work together with all of you um, in the city and at City Hall. So we'll start with our commissioners, Commissioners Ruth Kelly, Sunita Lanier, Dave Allen, Joe Jones, John O'Connor, and Kurt Rippart. I'm also delighted to have former Mayor Hartwell here with us tonight. At the county, our partners there, we have county commissioners Carol Hennessy, Jim Tallon, Stan Steck, Phil Skaggs, and Betsy Melton. Our Grand Rapids Community College Board of Trustees, Deb Bailey and Carlos Sanchez are here tonight. Grand Rapids Public School Board members, Wendy Falb, Tony Baker, Catherine Downs Lewis, and Christian Grant. From our neighboring cities, we have East Grand Rapids City Commissioner, Karen Hemrick, and then also Walker City Commissioners, Sandra Howland and Gary Carey. We have state, rep state representatives, uh, Winnie Brinks, David Legrand, Chris Affendulis, and Tommy Bran. We also have my good friend, Kalamazoo Mayor, Bobby Hopewell. Woo. Woo, we <laughs> and Portage Mayor, Patricia Randall. We have State Board of Education member Lupe Ramos Montani. We have the Honorable Christina Elmore. <clears throat> Representing U.S. Senator Gary Peters, we have Jamie Vasovic. We have representing U.S. Representative Justin Amash, Catherine Gordon. And then last but not least, we have Caledonia Supervisor Brian Harrison. <laughs> Who 
who most of you know is my partner in life. Uh, but he also gives me gentle reminders sometime, and the one he gave me about this speech is that no one ever complains about a speech being too short. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do this every year. Uh, sometimes I have elected officials sneak in that I don't know about. So if there's an elected official in the room that I didn't mention, please stand up. I can't see you because it's dark. <laughs> oh, Kevin Green, Supervisor Kevin Green. So to all of the elected officials here tonight, thank you for your service. I know the incredible sacrifices you make, and thank you for being a champion for Grand Rapids. And last, I want to take a moment to thank my amazing members of my Mayor's Youth Council, who many of you met tonight. I appreciate them helping with this event every year. Our city has a really great history and an exciting future. Fittingly, we are gathered tonight in a place that has played an important role in our city's history and now stands as a symbolic example of how we often must change and grow to meet the future. This building is the city's former water filtration plant. At one time, it was part of the nearly invisible public infrastructure that we often take for granted, clean drinking water. Our public infrastructure is so important. Sewers that are reliable and respect the environment, sidewalks and stoplights, pothole-free streets that are safe and secure. These things don't just happen, but you all know that because we have asked you to invest in all of these, and you have. I remember walking through this building 12 years ago, and it was during renovations, and I saw firsthand the challenges of redeveloping a beautiful old building versus building a new one. It is difficult to put beautiful ar architecture and a rich history on a balance sheet. Yet we are a community that has a number of developers who do just that, preserve some of our gems as they build the next generation of landmarks. This building and its owners are a testament to that. I want to thank Ed and Mike DeVries of DeVries Properties for hosting our event here tonight at Clearwater Place and for all they do in our community. <clears throat> 2017 was an incredible year. We continued to build on our historic strengths even as we made progress on new directions for our future. We witnessed signs of continued renaissance across our city, with cranes and construction dominating downtown and rapid home sales in our neighborhoods. It put us on track to recover all of our pre-recession population. More people call Grand Rapids home tonight than they did when we gathered a year ago. More people have jobs that allow them to provide for their families and future. We have one of the nation's strongest real estate markets, with our regional economy declared one of the fastest growing in the United States. We are a city of opportunity with a talented and engaged workforce. Where once the challenge was to find a job, we are now facing the challenge of finding people with the skills needed to fill jobs. We are heading in a positive direction. We can be proud that all across our city, in the private sector and the public sector, in neighborhoods and in city offices, we have a community that is focused not on growth sake, for growth sake, but growth that makes us better. Just think about all the ways the various steps forward touch individual lives. Our city saw the opening of the Michigan State University Research Center, growth in our medical sector, reinvestment in our public schools, the addition of nearly 700 new apartments, more than 150 active startup companies contributing to our community. As this incredible growth propels us into the future, it presents both challenges and choices, burdens and benefits. We are compelled to address a growing concern about housing for our residents who are low and moderate income. 
I believe Grand Rapids can be a great investment for developers while remaining a place where working class families, fixed income seniors, and those struggling for a better life can find a place to call home. After all, the best investment isn't just the houses and the high rises of our city, it is our people. <clears throat> we need to be a place where a rich variety of residents not only feel accepted and want to call Grand Rapids home, but they can afford to do so. These areas continue to be a focus for our city. And a number of proposed developments are mixed income. And our analysis of how to continue to grow with access and equity for all is an increasing part of our planning and future visioning. Speaking of investing in people, at last year's State of the City Address, I introduced the idea of our City Academy. And I am pleased to report that the program is in full swing with its first class. This experience creates informed, engaged community members who can help drive our city's direction in meaningful ways. The curriculum was designed by several community organizations, and it is intended to empower Grand Rapidians to better understand and participate in city government. The six session program offers a brief history of Grand Rapids and an overview of city government, how it works, its infrastructure, services, and finances. If someone is going to understand our city, feel comfortable in our city, best leverage our services and navigate or influence it in a variety of ways, this program arms them with that knowledge. A strong and thriving city is also one that builds on the talents and strengths of all of our residents. In addition to programs such as our City Academy, another way we do this is by increasing our talent pool for innovation and growth. The City of Grand Rapids, working with our Grand Rapids Public Schools, and I believe our awesome superintendent, Teresa Weather all Neal, is here tonight. Let's give her a round of applause. We are so grateful for her and her leadership. So in partnership with GRPS, Higher Education Partners, and K-Connect, we are setting in motion a plan that creates pathways for all students, particularly students of color, to get to and through college. The To College Through College Studio, or some call it T2C, has been the front door to college for more than 1,000 students in its very first year. T2C is helping students like Javon Sanders, who graduated from Central High School, earned an associate's degree at GRCC, and transferred to GVSU to pursue his dream of becoming a police officer. During his final year of college, Javon was accepted into our police department's internship program, but he was faced with the financial dilemma of going to school, paying for classes, while fulfilling the requirements of internship. T2C was there to help. Shayla Willis, I know, I think she's here tonight. <laughs> Shayla Willis of T2C advocated on Javon's behalf and secured funding from GVSU that allowed him to complete the final year of college. Javon graduated from GVSU last spring, and today he is a member of the most diverse recruit class in our police department's history. In Javon's words, if it weren't for the T2C studio, I would have missed the opportunity to complete the requirements to get into the academy. This is the help students need. This work is receiving both state and national attention for its partnerships and best practices, and we are grateful to all those who have helped make it happen. We want our city's talent pool to have bright and engaged college graduates from right here in Grand Rapids, representative of all of our neighborhoods. This program moves us in that direction. In the interest of a vibrant and diverse community and to address the talent gap in our region, we are actively promoting strategies to grow talent in our city. 
We refer to this effort as Grow Our Own. We know we continue, we know, <clears throat> we know we continue to have racial disparities in employment and that there are significant barriers to opportunity. Our black and Latino residents are more than twice as likely to be unemployed as our white residents. If we do not intentionally invest in young people of color within our city, both our long-term economic prosperity and their long-term economic prosperity is in jeopardy. The city is doing our part. Within the past year, 14 city departments have invested in youth by providing meaningful employment to 24 young people who might not otherwise have an opportunity. I encourage the private sector to push in this direction as well and hire talent from right here in Grand Rapids. And I am happy to report that many businesses are already doing this. One of the ways that they are doing this is through our Mayor's 100, which is a great partnership between the city and businesses across our community. So far, we have partnered with 65 businesses on this really exciting venture. The list includes companies like Cascade Engineering, Seaforth PR, Rockford Construction, and Malamai Juice Bar, just to name a few. And the concept is simple. Businesses provide positive internships for local youth who have completed the city's leadership program. In turn, they get the added benefit of 50% reimbursement for an hourly rate for up to six months. Thanks to a grant from the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, we will be able to enroll young people from areas of our city that experience the highest concentrations of unemployment. This program is working, but we have more ground to cover. This initiative is called Mayor's 100 for a reason. We believe that 100 is a meaningful metric of high community support to strive for and allows us to reach even more Grand Rapids students. So tonight, I call on other businesses to join us to help get to 100. A great city has thriving neighborhoods with great parks. That is why I am proud to report tonight that this past year, the city invested $3.2 million in 15 parks throughout our city. <clears throat> we were able to do this work thanks to the generosity of residents who supported a parks millage. We also operated 13 splash pads and had more than 40,000 visits to our swimming pools last summer. And much of this is driven by residents. We saw this with the recent community-driven Parks and Recreation Strategic Master Plan, which was created through the engagement and input of more than 5,300 residents. That is an example of authentic engagement. Residents gave a little more, they had a seat at the table, and now they will enjoy the return on, the invest in, of, on their investment that they have made in their city. The area I now want to turn our attention to is one of the most fundamentally important to our future, public safety. We have had a number of critical incidents with youth this past year that amplify the need for improving community and police relations. We must be a community of trust, safety, fairness, respect, and security for all. Our residents deserve this, all of our residents, no matter what neighborhood they live in, no matter their background, no matter what. Our dedicated police officers are an important voice in this conversation and are a critical part of the hard work of coming together in an honest, caring, and collaborative way to build trust in our community. Safety and fairness must walk hand in hand as we strive to build and strengthen relationships. 
our police department, and the entire city commission, we are dedicated to improvement. And to lead, we know we must first listen. Last year, a traffic study found black drivers were twice as likely to be stopped by police in Grand Rapids than white drivers. The report also showed that Hispanic drivers experienced disparities while driving in some areas of our city. Upon receiving these results, we immediately embarked on listening sessions in neighborhoods across our city. And I want to thank Commissioner Jones for all of his work with this. These voices found appreciative open ears, and we took action based on what we heard. We created a police policy and procedure review task force made up of residents from every single ward and Grand Rapids police personnel from every rank. The task force is examining policies and procedures, police officer training, particularly around implicit bias and responding to youth, and officer hiring practices. This work is being facilitated by 21st Century Policing, which has assisted cities and law enforcement agencies across the country with collaborative approaches to strengthening community and police relations. I want to thank our police chief, David Rahinsky, for his leadership. I also want to, I want to thank all of the members of the task force who are giving a significant amount of their time to this hard and critical work. Thank you so much. We are doing good work, but we know there is more to be done. And progress is happening on related fronts including some youth programs supported by our police department and officers. We just had the very first graduating class of our Pathways to Policing program. This initiative is open to Boys and Girls Club members and is led by our police officers and the Boys and Girls Club. It provides mentoring, hands-on training, test preparation, interview skill development, and life skills while providing a solid foundation that can assist students for any career that they choose. The Pathways to Policing is also a recruitment initiative for our police department, with the potential to create a police force that better reflects the diversity of our city. I also want to applaud Chief Rohinsky for starting a Youth Advisory Council comprised of high school students. This group meets with the chief every single month to discuss trending law enforcement issues that affect them. These conversations help to inform policy decisions. And more than that, it's giving young adults a voice. These efforts are aligned with the recommendations that have come from our Safe Alliance for Everyone Task Force, or SAFE. The task force, which has been chaired since the very beginning by my colleague, Commissioner Sunita Lanier, is also comprised of other commissioners and community members. The City Commission has actively worked to implement a number of key violence prevention initiatives based on this work, including expanding employment for 15 to 24 year olds, supporting the two college through college program, and working with the Family Outreach Center to implement a seeking safety program for at risk youth. I am so grateful to the dedication of the SAFE members and their anti-violence efforts. In December, you may have heard about this, the SAFE Task Force hosted a pitch and highlight night during which six individuals and nonprofits were awarded funding for ideas to reduce neighborhood violence. These winners brought forward creative, community-centered ideas. This citizen and organizational engagement is paying off for our community and moving us in the right direction. This year, we will continue to move the SAFE recommendations forward, including working with our city attorney's office on a restorative justice program for juveniles. Another action area will be implementation of an evidence-based violence prevention program. 
We need a place-based public health approach to violence reduction, coupled with real and meaningful economic opportunities. This approach works, and cities across the country are seeing positive results. Clearly, though, there is no one simple answer to building a better, safer, and trusting community. Building trust and improving community relations is a long road, and it takes a commitment from all of us, every single one of us. It takes listening, empathy, and having uncomfortable and difficult conversations. It also takes a willingness to change and a commitment to improvement. I mentioned earlier our need to keep Grand Rapids a place that all can call home. One of the many ways a community achieves this is through affordable housing. Too often we hear about families who have seen rents go up hundreds of dollars within a month or two and end up needing to frantically search for housing that they can afford. As our community has experienced incredible growth in a soaring housing market, those who are most vulnerable continue to struggle. The affordable housing crisis has been one of the most complex and challenging issues we have faced. We know this work requires a multi-pronged approach that includes the private developers, nonprofit housing organizations, and the public sector all working towards finding solutions. So last year, we created the Housing Advisory Committee, led by Commissioner O'Connor, and comprised of more than 20 community stakeholders. The committee's work has produced action items with 11 recommendations aimed at creating housing choice and opportunities for all. These recommendations are now collectively known as Housing Now, and my colleagues on the City Commission and I have already approved five of the recommendations. Leveraging state and federal dollars where available is also a part of the solution. Each year, we use community development block grant funds to support the maintenance, repair, and improvement of more than 500 owner and renter occupied housing units. We also provide short term rental assistance, and just this past year, we supported nearly 100 households for up to six months through the use of federal home dollars. Finally, we launched an eviction prevention pilot program. And in just three, yes, I, we should applaud for that. What is so exciting about this program is that in just three court sessions, three, 17 households have already been assisted. Yeah. We also amended our property tax forgiveness program, and we continue to work on this issue. These programs, though, they make a meaningful difference to those on the brink of losing their home in our community. Ensuring children and families have affordable housing is important. Ensuring healthy and safe housing is critical. I am so deeply sad to find that after a decade of decline, the number of lead poisoned children in Kent County is rising. With recent data indicating a 40% increase in lead poisoned children in the 49507 zip code over the last two years. There were 615 Kent County children with elevated blood levels in 2016, with two out of every three lead poisoned child in the entire county living in zip codes in the heart of our city. The primary cause? lead paint in older homes. This is especially frustrating since we have been actively engaged in this issue for years. I personally have served on two statewide commissions related to this issue in the past 12 years. And more recently, the city partnered with the county on a lead task force. Despite the efforts of so many, significant work remains. It is time for the city to work more closely with our partners to aggressively test for lead, examine our housing code, increase screening for lead hazards before occupancy, and accelerate remediation. 
Our community development department has been operating a lead hazard control program for years, and recently they amended their criteria so more homeowners can participate. The city is already looking at ways to step up, yet there is more that we can do. The recent increase in lead poisoning is a call to action. Children should not only feel safe in our city, they must be safe, especially, especially in their own homes. <clears throat> Affordable, healthy, and hazard-free housing is important to building strong neighborhoods. And strong neighborhoods are a key element for a community to be vibrant. Supporting strong neighborhoods remains a top priority for us. Our commitment to strengthening neighborhoods can be seen by our work to increase investment in infrastructure, support neighborhood business districts, and provide opportunities for meaningful engagement. This past year, we awarded more than $65,000 through our Neighborhood Match Fund to 32 creative neighborhood projects, many of them focused on and actually led by youth. Yeah, it's awesome. We had more than 450 participants at our 2017 Neighborhood Summit, and we are so excited about the rapidly approaching 2018 Summit, which is coming up on March 3rd. We also started the Neighborhood Leadership Academy with 27 neighborhood leaders participating in this eight-week program. The key to our strong neighborhood momentum is respecting the history of our neighborhood's past and engaging residents to move us in a stronger direction. We are also continuing our work at the city around racial equity. In the past year, more than 60 city management personnel participated in an intensive training on how government plays a role in structural racism and how we need to be a part of dismantling it. More than 160 city employees have been trained as a part of our Racial Equity Here initiative, with 20 employees moving forward to become trainers. In addition, more than 100 city staff received training on a racial equity tool for budgeting, and the city is conducting a pilot for each department to review one service through the lens of racial equity for the upcoming fiscal year. And I know, I, heard, I thought I heard somebody uh, recognize Greg Sundstrom. I want to thank our former city manager, Greg Sundstrom, for being a partner and a leader in this work. <clears throat> Last year, I announced the creation of the Grand Rapids Racial Equity Initiative. This initiative was launched in October, and I am so deeply grateful for Dr. Bill Pink, president of our Grand Rapids Community College. He is the co-chair of this initiative, and he is just simply amazing. This initiative brings together more than 35 community leaders and stakeholders to create action steps that increase equitable employment and reduce racial disparities in our city. As a group, we are also identifying ways to work together for community-wide impact. So for those Grand Rapids Racial Equity Initiative partners who are here tonight, I say thank you. Thank you for joining this effort, and thank you for your partnership. Great cities. Great cities have strong economies. Great cities support creating jobs for their residents. Great cities nurture entrepreneurs, and great cities attract talent. Each year during my State of the City address, I talk about our economy. I am so excited to tell you that our economic direction for our city is strong and projected to be even stronger. The metrics from 2017 are extremely positive. 
Our work with engaged partners across communities is more important than ever to maintain this momentum. This past year, the city partnered with Local First to continue to educate the community about the importance of strengthening our local economy by supporting local businesses. Yeah, we have great local businesses. <laughs> we also supported Local First in the launch of its Good for Grand Rapids campaign, which is focused on connecting businesses to resources that help them implement positive change through their business, using business as a force for good. Gold Coast Doulas is an example of this with their growth from four doulas in 2015 to 13 today. Yeah, it's awesome. So their expansion includes moving into a larger space, relocating from Cascade into the historic Kingsley Building in East Town. They not only provide important services to families, they give back to the community by volunteering with March of Dimes, along with donated funds to support Ellie's Place, Metro Health Foundation, and Moms Bloom. Local First also partnered with us to bring Bo Burlingham to Grand Rapids. So Bo is the author of last year's Mayor's Book of the Year, Small Giants. Nearly 1,000 people in our community heard Bo Burlingham speak about Small Giants through partnerships with Local First, the Economic Club, Celebration Cinema, and Mercantile Bank. And in our Economic Development Department, we continue to support the, work, the important work being done by the Latino Talent Initiative, Grand Rapids Area Black Businesses, and the West Michigan Hispanic Chamber. We will... <laughs> I am confident that we will continue to be a great place for businesses with the goal to be the most business friendly and inclusive city in our entire state. With this in mind, I meet regularly with business owners. I visit companies throughout our city and I work with the Grand Rapids Chamber and the right place to gather input and feedback that identify ways that we can improve. This engagement with the private sector is key to our community success and is key to almost every single challenge that we hope to tackle. Whether that is affordable housing, increasing access to opportunity, youth employment, economic development, workforce development, or racial equity. The Grand Rapids Chamber is key to these efforts, and it recently completed an ease of doing business survey. The feedback that was in this survey has served as a starting point for the city to improve services. And here are a few of the action items as a result. Online applications. Over two thirds of permit applications through the city are now submitted online. Business owners and citizens can now go online rather than stand in line. Submitting applications, yeah, we should give it up for that. <laughs> Submitting applications not only saves time for applicants, but it saves staff time, and we are passing on those savings to the applicant. Electronic plan review. Those who want to build in our city, they have to submit plans and review for review and approval. We receive up to 25,000 pages of plans a year. We're implementing a new electronic plan review solution that will be fully integrated with our online permitting portal. User testing is underway and we hope to go live this spring. And I wanna give a shout out to Lou Canfield for his work on this. We also continue to improve our websites. And with the recent launch of our new website, I am more confident than ever that if you go to our site, you will actually be able to find what you are looking for. <laughs> I can tell you that was not always the case. Uh, we will continue to improve and update our web content because continuous improvement means just what it says. And I wanna give a huge thanks 
to Becky Jo Glover and the entire team who worked on this. <laughs> Customer feedback surveys. Our residents, businesses, and taxpayers, you are our customers. We have refined our online, online feedback form and we are now sending emails or postcards to customers so that we can start to receive ongoing feedback to better serve you. Yes, we are a growing city that is adding jobs and opportunities. It is a great place to both work and to spend a night downtown. So let's talk about parking. <laughs> While event and visitor parking remain readily accessible, the continued growth of our urban core as a great place to earn a living has created new demand for monthly parking permits downtown. Many have said that this is a good problem to have, at least in the short term. It is a sign, I know, right? But it's a sign, it's an amazing sign. It's a sign and symptom that more people are visiting working and living downtown, which is a great thing. The city, we are committed to preventing parking and mobility from being a barrier to business growth. Adequate and available parking is part of a well-designed and a thoughtfully planned city. In fact, the city master plan identifies the need to expand parking supply to support our growth. With that said, it would be short-sighted and expensive to look only to government to address parking needs. Rather, we should look to our history. Public-private partnerships should be and need to be a part of the solution, and that is exactly what is happening. We see this in the exciting new Studio Park Theater project about to break ground. And we can say... <laughs> So what did we do? Instead of taking on tens of millions of dollars in debt to build a new garage, the city partnered with the developer to build a privately owned parking structure that delivers over 900 spaces. The city will minimize our need to invest public dollars and we are supporting the private investment by leasing, by doing a long-term lease for 300 new spaces for downtown employees. This is an example of a win-win. It leverages innovation and the free market. The city also deployed a similar strategy to partner with Spectrum Industries and deliver another 290 public spaces downtown. We are also starting to see creative solutions to lessen demand, such as the parking cash out program, where employees are free to use those funds as they deem fit. They can rent a parking spot or ride a bus or a bike or even share a ride. The result is fewer cars on our roads, less demand for parking, and more money in an employee's pocket. But I want you to hear me. We know parking is important, and we are diligently and strategically working to bring new solutions and supply forward. Now on to the last, thank you. <laughs> My fellow mayor, you know. <laughs> so now on to the last effort I want to talk to you about tonight. And it involves our elders. Those who built this city. Those with deep roots here. Often generations deep. Grand Rapids has neighborhoods where more than 20% or one in five of our residents are 65 years or older. Public health and technological advances have increased longevity. But how do we make sure that we are ensuring that our seniors have healthy, productive lives and that we are recognizing older adults as a valued resource in our city? This past year, our planning department, in partnership with AARP, conducted more than 20 listening sessions with seniors from all corners of our community, in churches and senior centers and neighborhoods, more than 13 languages were translated. The listening tour attracted more than 300 participants, 
and resulted in more than 2,000 suggestions to help Grand Rapids become a more age-friendly city. <clears throat> in addition, a random telephone survey of residents was commissioned to learn what issues were top of mind for our older adults. We took time to listen, and we heard incredibly important feedback. So as we look to the future, our city is due for updating our city's master plan. So the time is perfect for us to integrate a commitment to becoming an age-friendly city. I'm excited to announce that to advance this work, we will be reaching out to AARP Michigan about adding Grand Rapids to the age-friendly cities and communities network. So what does this entail? This entails the creation of a community-wide action plan based on baseline assessment data of how age-friendly our city is today. Indicators to measure progress against that plan will be developed and then moved into implementation. So that brings me to this year's Mayor's Book of the Year. So if you have heard the State of the City in the past, you know that every year I designate a book for our community to read that is related to or aligned with a direction that we hope to travel. So this year, the Mayor's Book of the Year that's been selected is Where We Live, Communities for All Ages. This book includes inspiring examples throughout the United States of what can be done to create better communities for people of all ages and all abilities. What is good for seniors is good for all of us. There are copies here tonight. Thank you. <clears throat> There are copies here tonight. Uh, members of my Mayor's Youth Council will be handing them out, and so please take one. So we look forward to working with ARP and the Area, Area Agency on Aging on this journey, and I want to pause to acknowledge the passion and work of my colleague, Commissioner Ruth Kelly. She... <clears throat> She has truly been a champion for Grand Rapids becoming an age-friendly city, along with Ginny Smith, who is a senior and is serving as our age-friendly coordinator. Thank you both. <clears throat> Before we close tonight, I want to make a brief comment about our ongoing search for city manager. So the city commission recently unanimously decided to reopen our search for a new city manager. While we had some clearly competent candidates with desirable experiences, we believe this is ultimately in the best interest of our city due to the incredible importance of this job. City staff, from our fire chief, the police chief and officers on patrol, to those who fix our roads and inspect construction sites, maintain our parks, operate our water and sewer system, more than 1,500 employees in total, all ultimately report to our city manager. And the city manager reports to the city commission. In an era of term limits, and if history is any indicator, the person that we select for this position will likely be here long after the seven of us on the city commission are gone. Some have focused on the cost of the search and I ask, them to balance, I ask them to balance that with the cost of not finding the absolute best of the best to serve our city. <clears throat> so we have, covered, we have covered a lot of ground tonight. And as we close, we must be mindful of our history, and we must be relentless in moving our community forward in a positive direction. I am constantly amazed by the giftedness and the potential in our community. Grand Rapids is full of individuals and organizations with extraordinary ingenuity and initiative. We are a caring and committed city.
When we see a need, we come together to, to better understand the problem and to find solutions. We are willing to be honest with ourselves about the ways we fall short of our very own standards and where we need to grow. We are not afraid to admit that we can and we should do better because ordinary is not good enough for us. We have been recognized around the world because we are creative in finding solutions to problems. I know as surely as I know anything that we have the talent and the resources to have all of our communities moving forward together. What we need is honest and sustained collaboration. We need everyone at the table working together to find solutions. We need to listen to one another, even when it's uncomfortable. We need to bring our best ideas and our best efforts forward. And we need you, all of you, to be engaged in a meaningful way. And we must always, always remember that we are tied together with a shared vision for our community. We all want safe neighborhoods, rewarding jobs, successful businesses, strong schools, well-maintained parks, a vibrant downtown, and a city where we feel connected and where we feel like we belong. I am so unbelievably grateful every day to serve you and to serve our amazing city as mayor. The updates I have shared this night, tonight illuminate some of the great progress that we have made together, as well as the journey that still lies ahead. So I look forward to working with all of you in the year ahead to celebrate all of the successes, but also to actively work to find solutions to our challenges. So thank you all so much for joining me tonight. I can't say enough how much I appreciate it. Thank you.